I want to talk to you all today about a, a very interesting topic. It's it's disturbing, but it's it's a very important topic to cover. You know, I was recently made aware that a large number of uh, pet foods, especially dog and cat foods, the, the dried foods I'm talking about, um, they have many ingredients in them that can be harmful. I'm not saying all of them do, but again, a large portion of them do. And uh, I read a book. You, you may want to get this book yourself. Uh, it's called Dead Pets Don't Lie by Joe Artis and Donna Howell. It's a very interesting book and gives a good bit of information as well as some links. And I will share uh, a link with you all too in the description box uh, below the video. Uh, yeah, I wrote, wrote down some notes here. I just wanted to uh, share some uh, things that, that I had read, uh, not like d direct qu quotes or anything, but uh, I want to share some information that I gathered from, from this book and uh, as well as, you know, watching a couple of videos. Many dog and cat foods contain kidney damaging scent enhancers and also dangerous preservatives. A large number of the foods have been linked to cancer, hair loss, heart, kidney, and liver failure, premature death, and other things as well. When you use a commercial pet food, you need to know exactly what is in the food. You need to read the label carefully and then uh, you have to educate yourself on what is in the label and uh, what to avoid and what to look for as healthy ingredients. I'm still doing this myself. I've, I've been studying up on it some the last several weeks, but uh, I by no means am an expert. But uh, I want the best for little Enoch here. He's my, my sweet little fellow here that, that keeps me company. And uh, I want to do my best to take as good a care of him as I can. And I know you, all of you do as well, you who have pets. And, or if you know others that have pets, please share this information with them as well. Um, okay, where was I? Uh, when, uh, yeah, you, you need to know, again, exactly what is in the food. And much dry food is made from the rendering process where both whole animals and animal reject parts, supermarket rejects, which would consist of expired meats, diseased animals, and even euthanized pets are used in some of these commercial dry food products. And the final remnants of animals are ground to a powder which uh, major pet food companies uh, buy and then add to their food recipes. Avoid all products uh, with, with an ingredient ingredients uh, just named uh, like a, a meat such as uh, a product meal or a uh, protein byproduct meal. It's again, these contain, contain rendered ingredients, which are not good at all. And uh, many pet foods also contain GMOs, especially GMO corn. GMOs are not good for anyone, whether it be an animal or a human. I may do a video on that at some point later, uh, uh, just strictly on GMOs. I'm just briefly touching on it here in this one. Also, uh, num a number of farmers use Roundup weed killer on their crops, which is toxic and it cannot be washed off. In one study, uh, a large percentage of mice fed uh, GM corn, G GMO corn, they died prematurely, and rats developed tumors just four months into a two-year study. 
GMOs have also been linked to allergies, infertility, and other serious health issues in both humans and animals. Although it's hard to find information on it because the you know they try to suppress the truth and, and keep you from getting the uh, information that really is what what is needed for you to make a good decision on what you buy. Uh, and they also uh, can call, call it, cause cancer and organ deterioration. Avoid all animal foods containing corn or soy as a main ingredient. In fact, you should just avoid corn altogether because if it's got corn in it and it's in a pet food, it's, it's uh, most likely, uh, about 95% likely actually, to contain GMO corn, which, which is not good. The same with soy. Many, many of them have, they have GMO soy now as well. Unless something says organic, um, you want to stay clear of it as much as possible. Okay. Um, also, look for named meat meals like chicken or a lamb meal. You know, something that that's it's a named meat. It just doesn't doesn't say just. Uh, you know, uh, like a, a meat protein or meat byproduct. You know, those are the ones you want to stay away from. And these should be the primary protein source, some, some meat source, you know, such as chicken, beef, or uh, lamb, or what, what have you. Animals need high-protein diets, and... They, they actually need very little grains in their diet, if, if, if any at all. Uh, if you, you do feed them any type of grains, make, make sure it's a, it's a limited amount. Now, some red flag event ingredients uh, to avoid in, in the, these foods are preservatives, such as BHA, BHT, ethoxyquin, propylgallate, Propylene glycol. Interesting uh, enough, uh, I've seen propylene glycol in human food. It's not safe for human or animal consumption. Avoid dyes also. They put dyes in, in these uh, multicolored foods to give it an appearance of, you know, having a variety or, or having like different vegetables or, or what have you. Uh, dyes are harmful. To avoid those, also avoid artificial flavorings or generic flavoring. Avoid sweeteners such as fructose, corn syrup, sucrose, sugar, and cane molasses. And if you can't understand the ingredients on the list, do not buy it. Avoid meat and bone meal or meat meal which contain byproducts. You know, that's, that's what it says on the label. In other words, instead of chicken, it just says meat. Or, you know, instead of, instead of beef, it will say meat or bone, bone meal. Uh, and again, these contain byproducts, which are not healthy at all. Uh, also, look for meat sources uh, as the first ingredient on the label. And, uh, you know, such as, such as beef, chicken, lamb, what, what have you. Also, uh, stay away from light or senior or special formula foods. Also, avoid generic or store brands. Change brands or flavors every few months for dry foods. And if change, changing the brand instead of just the, the flavors of the food, do it slowly. Just add a little bit at a time to, to the other food until your pet gets used to it.
it usually takes them a couple of weeks or so to, to get used to the change in diet. With canned food, however, you can change flavors daily if desired. And uh, although the canned foods in general aren't don't have as many bad ingredients, some of them are not good either. Again, you just you have to do your homework on it, and uh, make sure you you read the labels good. And uh, do not get dry, uh, dry food wet, as it can cause bacteria to grow, and some bacteria can be very dangerous for your pets. Now. Uh, I personally use Taste of the Wild food. It's 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 a good food, and it's it's I don't know how long it's been around, but I was I was recommended that uh, by a specialty pet store I went to, and that that's a brand that they carry. And in fact, one of the ladies that that recommended it to me, she she uses it on her pets at home. And uh, I like to hear that when people don't just recommend something to you, but they actually use it themselves. And she said her, her pets do great on it. And I haven't had any problems with little Enoch. He, he's done fine on it. And they do have different flavors uh, of the Taster Wild. And there, there are a number of brands out there, although there's a lot more that are not good than as opposed to those that are good. But you, you just have to do your, your homework on it. And uh, also, I occasionally give him a little, you know, chicken or turkey, or beef, and uh, sometimes a little sweet potato. In general, they're not supposed to have much people food, but they can eat some, you know, especially like meats. And uh, sweet potato is good for them. Uh, they can eat that as well. And other than that, I, I just mainly just give him his regular dry food. I may try some canned food uh, here sometime in the future. I need to to check it out and uh, you know try to find out which ones are good. And if you if you know which ones are, are really good to use, uh, please share the information. Uh, whether it be canned food or dry food, uh, please share your comments on that. And again, I'm going to leave a link uh, for for a website you can go to that has helpful articles on pets and you can check that out as well so thanks for watching and please share this information with others and we'll talk to you later bye bye